ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Nipula Nipuna Ranavaka, Mr. Anjit Rupa Singha, State Secretary of Sports and Youth Ministry, Ravind Samar Vikram and guest and distinguished guest, the invitees. First of all, let me congratulate all of you who has been recognized and given these awards for your achievements. It is refreshing to see that this university or this institution, along with the stakeholders, giving priority for research. Because in Sri Lanka, what we find at this stage is that we don't spend much time on research, or we don't invest on research. Most of our decisions are emotionally driven, but not data driven. As a result, we can, re we can see that certain competitive countries, I would say, or the countries that we compete, or institutions or departments that we compete regionally or globally, are one step ahead because not that they are better than us, or they are talented, or they have more infrastructure than us, simply because they rely on data and research. And we depend on emotions. We do believe that the free education should be protected. But at the same time, we also have to accept that we have to change the system or the education system that can match the current demands in the world. Not locally, but globally. We travel a lot within this country. We meet a lot of department heads lot of officials and even when you go and talk to certain universities what we see is that even vocational training and skill development departments we are still 20 to 15 years back comparing to most of the institutions in the globe the world job market has, is changing rapidly countries like australia or even india at this stage with their modern approach to the world labor market. But the education system keeps on, educational curriculums keep on changing every quarter. But for some reason, Sri Lanka has to wait for seven years to decide whether to change or not. When my father started the vocational training, vocational training institution in 1997, the demand was that at that stage. But today, things have changed. The curriculum has changed, the world job market has changed, the approach has changed. So I believe it is right time for us not only to adapt, but also to think different and look at the global market rather than depending on traditional emotional approach towards certain questions when it comes to finding solutions. We talk about infrastructure development. Every government that comes into power invests on infrastructure development. If you look at most of our budgets, it's purely based on infrastructure development. In my ministry, which is youth and sports, I did a small research when I got hold of the ministry because this was my first ministry. I never done a cabinet portfolio or a state ministry before. I entered to parliament when I was just 23 years old. And that was my first experience in, in politics. Along with that, down the line, I was in the opposition for five years, which I learned a lot. I would say that was my best experience in my life. Because I got a lot of time to read, do research, and think. Especially when I was remanded, I had enough time to read and think. So which was a good thing. But what I'm trying to say is when I took over the ministry, I went through the budget and what I found was that only 6% of the entire youth and sports ministry budget is invested on youth. Only 6%. Rest is invested on infrastructure, salaries and new projects. The question I asked from my officials 
If you are only investing 6% of the out of the total budget of 7 billion rupees for youth and sports, for the youth, what is the outcome that we are going to expect? We still have outstanding bills of about 5 billion rupees, which from last 5 years. And we have multi sports complexes out starting from north to south, which are most of them are half built. And we do have a lot of institutions or buildings, I would say, not institutions, for youth empowerment, development, leadership development. But yet, every other year, our youth unemployment rate goes up. Up to now, before Corona, we have 20.2% youth unemployment rate in this country. So something to think about, for all of you, is that have we invested correctly ever since independence? Even though we have 20.2% youth unemployment rate before COVID-19, we have 1.8 million people working in the government sector. Another 1.6 million people are depending on Samurdi. Samurdi Sahana Dara Muddare. So the question is, are we on the right track? So last week I was at the finance ministry trying to convince certain officials to form a fund, a guarantee fund for startups and SMEs. I'm sure most of the inventions, inventors here or innovative ideas here in the, on this forum are looking forward to expand or invest to someone to come and invest in your idea. I won't blame the central bank because central bank is totally depending on ROI. They don't want to banks to lend to some, some, some crazy idea that might become a billion dollar idea but yet they don't want to invest because that is the traditional banking system. I tried to convince them at my early stage of my career, Ranjit knows, and we failed. I tried to convince banks to come and invest on startups, tech startups. Some did. Some of the private banks came up with funds or seed funds, but most of the banks did not, simply because of the guarant guarantees. Because Sri Lankan banking system is such, you go with a proposal to the bank, you give them a concept, they ask you a million questions, they give you 101 forms to fill and last day, just before you get your money, they ask for your deed. So if they ask the deed at the beginning, we would have given it without filling all those forms. So we want to create a guarantor fund so that fund can be the guarantor for ideas like you all have to make it a reality through the banking system and also we are hoping to create a seed fund. Well, we, spend, we spend 55 billion rupees on Samurdi daily, annually. But I just asked them for 2 billion rupees for startups. So if we can spend 50 by 55 billion rupees on Samurdi, which is not bad, I mean, I won't blame on them, because we need to look after most of our rural economic or rural underprivileged or low-income families. But you know, isn't it unfair for me to ask 2 billion rupees for startups and SMEs. But unfortunately, most of the officials are depending on emotions, as I said, not on data, maybe because lack of research, and maybe because lack of investing in R&D. The thinking pattern is different, but they agreed for the guarantor fund, and also they agreed for a seed fund, which we will be starting by next year from Act of Parliament, a seed fund for new startups, especially for tech, startup and innovation, where we can fund them based on their ideas to allow them to grow and also mentor them until they become independent or a global platform. Because the population of the country doesn't matter. India with 1.5 billion population and looking at a 5 trillion startup industry, which is much bigger than the global startup industry at the moment. But countries like Estonia with 1.2 million population, they have four unicorns, including organizations like Skype. So we have 
as I said in the beginning, we have the talent, we have the capacity, but we need to drive with data, not with emotions. So this is what we are trying to do as the next generation politicians, trying to convince our seniors and try to convince our officials to think different and be a progressive partner for the younger generation to build it, to build this country to the next level. And I'm glad that today how you have approached the students and your curriculum and also how we have presented yourself with our own traditions and building the base around that and not only enhancing but also giving them the due recognition as indigenous community in this country to take that to the global platform. So this is what the New Zealand has done with rugby and this is what Australians have done and I'm sure in Sri Lanka if you can do that give them the create them the platform and that will reach the globe with the Sri Lankan identity. So with, with, with that note, I would like to congratulate all of you and we, we would like myself and Nipuna, I'm sure Nipuna will speak few words and explain his ideas and vision from our government side, how that we are going to approach the next generation and how are we looking at promoting R&D in Sri Lanka. And myself, of course, my ministry is now based on R&D because I have changed that, six, I have converted that 6% into 20% this year and I'm going to make it 40% by end of four years. So end of my four years or five years of ministry, youth ministry and sports, youth and sports ministry will have a mandate of investing 50% of our budget for human resource development, not infrastructure development. On that day, we'll be able to win medals and we will be able to win the global platform. Unless you do that, we will always talk about the glories in the past and we will pass, that, pass the same message to the next generation. So, we are committed and we have, we have understood the value, the importance of this field and we want to invest on this and take this to the global platform. So on a final note, let me congratulate for all the winners and everyone who contributed to this, especially to this university, Mr. Ranjit Rupa Singh and his team, and everyone for being here and giving your contribution, irrespective of the which government comes into power. I believe we have to continue what we have to do. It doesn't matter who is in power, it doesn't matter which government is in power. What matters is the policies that continues to the next stage or to the next generation. And we will create that platform so these young, talented people out here, the next generation of Sri Lanka out here, can reach the globe. I always say, Jati ka jayagrahana kohumat labenoa, Jati antara jayagrahana labanna sudhana bevo. Thank you. Mistuti, thank you.